there was a time, if one goes back, say, 300 years, that the idea of science serving the community was a bit problematic. Um, scientists such as there were, say, in the 17th century, were considered to be producing knowledge for its own sake. Increasingly, through the 19th, 20th century and into the present, we expect science to produce useful goods, medical, military, civic goods. And increasingly, as science has become part of and folded into our social and political and economic life, how to put it, the, the, the house of science gets opened up and more and more people want to have a voice in what kind of science gets supported, what science is mobile, what ends science is mobilized towards. They even might want to have a voice in what science is credible and what science is not credible, as for example in debates over global warming. So the, the degree of, of public participation in, in science is, is changing and changing quite rapidly. I think what's pushing these changes is partly the, the integration of, of science into practical enterprises like the military, medicine, government, and especially the human and, and social sciences in the design of products, in the layout of supermarkets, in advertising, including the marketing of political candidates, etc. So that science has really become part of the fabric of our, our, our lives, and therefore a wide range of people care about it much more. I'm not very optimistic, but I've come a little bit optimistic about some init initiatives which I very much hope will, will be taken further to mobilize biomedical expertise in the cause of global public health instead of in developing blockbuster drugs for the chronic conditions of people like me. Everything from Viagra to Rogaine to, uh, uh, to statins. Uh, as much as I think I appreciate the results of this sort of work, I, I, I would like to see, uh, as in the work of the Gates Foundation, I would like to see more energy directed towards problems of, of global uh, public health. I think the smartest thing I did to advance my career was with, with one or two exceptions, never to think about advancing my career. <laughs> I, I think I've, I've had as much fun as I've had in my profession and perhaps done as decently well as I have done by not thinking about this question at all. It's also the case that it helps to have an audience for what you're doing. And so I've never assumed that an audience is automatically interested in what I'm interested in. So when I address an audience, either in writing or orally, I assume I have to motivate them to care about what I care about.